All right, so uh, this is black green Tron. I did take just a little bit of a liberty with it. Um, so in the lands, not too different. Um, you're cutting some of the basic lands here for some of the black green lands. I'm running a one of Blooming Marsh and a one of Land of War Waste. Um, a lot of them are on another Land of War Waste down to just one forest. I really don't want to be down to just one forest, so I, I ended up just keeping that. And I still want us to run the factory. The rest of it are the uh, basic Tron lands that you would expect. A one of Ghost Quarter, one of Sanctum, and then a one of Factory. Uh, in the main board here, the only thing that we're running that's actually black is the Fatal Pushes. Um, just giving us another little bit of a removal spell. Um, the Stirring, Spheres, Stars, Expo maps are all four of the same with the Sylvan Scrying, so that's all pretty standard for us. Um, we're on three Relics right now, a lot of Graveyard decks. I wanted to have more access to that than just trimming that down. Um, four O Stones. I would love Warm Coil Engine right now. It's just where we want to be, so I have that as a four of. Four cards, two Ugans. Um, this is where things, uh, in order to make the room for those other cards, um, I did have to cut one Walking Ballista and one Ulamog, because if this was just my green list, I would be on two Ballistas and two Ulamogs, or one Ballista and three Ulamogs, but that's where we ended up making those cuts in order to fit these things in. Now, the sideboard is the reason you go... Um, black here instead of just being mono green and we have uh, two thought seizes four collective brutalities and two ravenous traps so our extra hand hate um and ability to keep up with burn decks is pretty awesome with collective brutality uh, ravenous traps unless allows us to just hit their graveyard without them suspecting it and then we have the nature's claim thragtus and thought knots that we normally expect as well so let's get this going We did with 5 0 moneyed. Alright, so this hand we cannot keep. This hand's pretty bad as well. This hand's very mediocre. We're gonna keep it. Keep the stirrings on top. Alright, start off against an aggressive deck. So we're gonna go with the stirrings here first, so we can form Tron the most efficiently. Because next turn we can go Tower Force into the Sylvan Scrying, and then following turn Expedition Map um, into it. So that way we don't have to have, rely on having two Force in play. And if we would let off with the Expedition Map, there's a chance they could always hit it. I don't want to have it hit. So, take some more damage. Very happy we got a worm coil engine. Don't know if it will be quick enough though. Alright, so we're at least taking four damage and then another two on our turn with the map. So not great. And then on the following turn they'll hit us for another four. Very good chance we're just done. Don't... I don't know, like... You're talking about, like, after we stirrings and realize they were on burn, we should have scooped instead of seeing anything. Alright, so we do have Tron and we are also dead. So let's scoop here. 
Yeah, I guess we could have scooped um, so they don't see where they're playing. Uh, I don't think it matters that much, like, for them. We're taking up the relics here, the Ugans, the Ulamog, O Stones, and Ballista, possibly the Karns as well. We want the Thought Knots, the Thragtus, the Brutalities. I've been playing around with playing, bringing in the claim, but I think we're going to keep them out. So we'll bring all of that in. There's still three more cards we need to bring back in. So we'll bring in the Ballista, an Ulamog, and an Ugin. Yeah, I don't know. We we could have. Um, I don't th like their game plan doesn't really change that much though, so I don't think it was that big. Of, but I, it is a potential that we should have done that. Okay, this hand's slow. Um, but it's fine. It's got a Thought Knot, which is pretty great against them. We would love to get a Collective, but apparently we're not that cool. I'm going to start off with a map here, just in case we do draw another Tron piece. It would be pretty sweet. Especially if they give it to us. Nope, that's a card. Okay. Stirrings. Grab a tower. Goodbye, brutality. Pass it back. Hopefully, they don't blow up our map. Yeah, I'm not blowing up our map. Getting a stirrings. Hmm, we can thin our deck first and then stirrings. I don't think there's anything we necessarily want to hit, so then the deck will be better. I want to grab the mine and then let's stirrings. Um we have a card already, we have a tower already. I'm gonna grab the star here actually, just because in case we do get a, um, a brutality or anything like that, we'll be able to cast it. We're at least taking three, possibly seven if they cast a bolt here. Next turn we have to decide. You did genic growth. Oh my gosh. They're gonna hope they save wish they saved that though. Oh they got a ton of cards in hand, they don't care. It's a bummer if we lose this, because this is one of the reasons we play Collective Brutality and go black green is to get the extra edge against burn. Alright, so we can either Thought Knot here or Karn. I feel our best option is actually Thought Knotting, because we're going to be able to take a card from their hand and block, so it's going to be preventing more damage. Um, as a result of that, why don't we start off with playing Chromatic? And we will fetch for a black source. Ooh, worm coil. We're good at this. Worm coil and star. All right, we'll pass it back. Let's see what they got. We're going to six. Hopefully they don't have two more bolts. Otherwise we're just dead. That's bolt one. Bolt two. Our opponent's so good. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> oh. That's a bummer. <laughs> oh, we would have loved to see Collective Brutality there. That would have been sweet.
Russ, we're playing against a Russ. Let's keep this. We got two Tron pieces and two Sterling, so not bad. Well, we've got Tron, so we're just going to play Tron. If we don't hit anything by turn th three, we won't play the Tron piece, and instead we'll play um, Blooming Marsh to Ancient Stirrings. So They're most likely on Phoenix here. Pyromancers, okay. Thing in the ice, all right. Tron, target, come on. Worm coil. Is worm coil good enough? If they flip that thing in the ice, it's really not. Yeah, let's just go blooming marsh into a stirrings. And we will snag this Ugin. Pass it back to them. Yeah, I didn't like running out the Worm Coil there, because if they flip it, it bounces back to our hand, we'd recast it, Blooming Marsh comes in and play tapped, and then we're just recasting it again. So it seemed better to run out the Ancient Stirrings, find the target. If they do flip thing in the ice, that's fine. They're, they would have hit us for seven no matter what we did there. Um, so. Yeah, if they hit Arc Light here, we're going to be just happy if they want to just bring everything back and beat us up. Yeah. Because we have Tron, Ugin, Neg4, go opponent, next game opponent. Okay, so we want to bring in the Ravenous Traps, and the Thought Seizes seems good. Brutality doesn't seem bad either. They can rip their hand apart and mess with them a good bit. Thought knots aren't terrible either. And Thragdos. A lot of cards. Um, so Ballista doesn't seem great. I'm willing to cut those. Um, the Relics I want to keep. The Pushes I want to keep. Oh, sounds good for wiping the board. So it's really just like the more expensive cards that we were probably leaning on cutting here. Hmm. Yeah, one, two, three, eight. I might be overboarding here. Could cut the Karns. I like to keep the Ugans and the Warm Coils. Those seem pretty, pretty good. Maybe the Thought Seizes aren't really worth it, and the Collectives are good enough at this point. Thought that might be a bit too... not where we want to be. I oh, do want to bring out a Thrag Tusk. You don't think I need the Collective Brutalities? So you're thinking we cut the Brutalities and bring in two claims here? for their Blood Moon plan, like that. I don't mind swapping to that. You wanna bring, you wanna bring in the thoughts? Bring in the thoughts, we'd have to cut something else.
Mm -hmm. Okay, Reese, we're gonna go with your recommendation here. I like Thrag Tusk a lot, though. It always leaves us with a blocker and gains us life, but it, once they flip their thread, it's kind of irrelevant. So this hand does not form Tron, and it's not doing anything really fast. We're gonna have to ship it. This hand forms Tron, and we have a threat, and we've got a relic on top. So this is this is where we want to be in life. So you have the option of either going uh, Chromatic Star in turn one or Expedition Map in turn one. Um, the, or Relic, but I don't think we want to go Relic turn 1. Um, I'm going to go the star here. Um, and the reason I usually like going with this plan is because I, I get a card deeper while forming Tron. Um, now, with the black-green version, there is reason to leave behind the Chromatic Star because then I can use it for black mana if we need it. Um, such as right now. So we can just... Crack this for black mana. Or we can run out the map. Form. It's either forming Tron. If we don't use the Fatal Push now, there's a good chance we're not going to be able to cast it. So I'm just going to have to go for it right now. And then we're going to Fatal Push. Take that out. And then we're going to run out a map and pass it over ascension's fine ish So there's a chance I'm not actually going to form Tron on my turn with the map. I feel like a better play is going to be forming it uh, using the green source. Um, because then if they do Blood Moon us, we will still have Ancient Stirrings and Sylvan Scrying live. Where if we form Tron now, um, we can run out the O-Stone, but there's a chance that it's not going to be enough. And we're still going to be able to form Tron. Either way, because we have the Sylvan Scrying, so. Um, another Relic, or an Expedition Map, or a Mine. Not particularly excited about any of those. I guess we'll take the Relic here. And we'll pass it back to them. Good thing we go NCN. I don't know what that means. Oh, yeah. Good thing we got uh, Nature's Claim in. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good call, Reese. They've got an active one now. So we're going to have to worry about farming Tron, getting out Ostone, and wiping the board. Otherwise, they can just kill us. Yes, yes, I got it. Nature's Claim, Nature's Claim. Okay, what they got? Oh my gosh. I feel like we're gonna die to this right now, so.
thing in the ice. Bolting us down to 14. Thing in the ice is at 1 in 3. Well, that's not good, folks. <laughs> a flipped horror. The other one's on two. They also get to probably hit our stirrings. Oh, they're gonna hit the star. Okay. I feel like I would hit stirrings. So we can still been scrying for the other Tron piece here. Um, but then all we do is we're gonna be running out relic and then cracking it. Um and casting O stone, and then there's a good chance we're just dead. If we go ancient stars and try to form Tron that way, um, we're still in a pretty rough spot because even if we do form it, we're going to just run out worm coil, um, and then we die. And they've got three cards in hand, so there's a very, very, very strong chance that other thing in the ice is going to flip. So. Sounds like we're screwed either way. See if we're dead. Oh, we're not. Oh, we might be. But we might not. What a joyous day. Alright, so I do want to get rid of the Pyromancer's Ascension right now. Um, as much as I'm not happy so about it because they're going to be able to possibly still get some shenanigans going on. But I want to get rid of that. Um, if I want to run out the Relic here, I can't. I won't be able to hold up mana for stirrings. Well, we can go stirrings first, see if we hit a land. That doesn't seem unreasonable. There's the land. We'll go sphere. And a relic. Folks, let's see if that was good enough to hold our opponent off. That's another Phoenix. We are at potentially one. Let's see if we can hit a Fatal push, we did not. Is our opponent slow rolling a bolt? Because that'd be really rude. How do I get that add-on, Russ? I want to oog in here. We're going to shoot the Phoenix. Run out the O stone. And pass it over. Them. 
Alright, well, if it goes back to our turn, we should win. And, uh... Otherwise, we're not... We're just not... <laughs> yes! Did they concede? Yes! <laughs> we got there! <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I thought we were so dead. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> We were dead to anything, I swear. Any burn spell, they're just like, boom, gone. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was ridiculous. <laughs> oh. Okay, we will take the play. Uh, this hand has a lot going on for it, but it's not forming Tron anytime soon. Um, so I'm not keeping that. This hand's pretty suspect as well. Real suspect. Like, we'd have to hit exactly a Tron piece off of the stirring and then hit another Tron piece. That's just too risky. This feels a little bit better. It has standard land drops. Um, we don't need to land our war waste. I'm going to play mine and pass it over. Karn's cool. Let's run out. Oops. Same thumb. We'll play a star. I'm not going to crack the star yet. I'm going to hold off another turn just in case we hit like a Sylvan's Crying. I don't want to get stuck in a position where we can't cast it. Blood Crypt. They got good looking lands. It means they're good at this game, so we should be afraid. Woohoo! We're good at this game. Alright, we've got a tower. We're gonna pass it over. for us. Simeon Spirit Guide. What is going on? Is this just Grishol Bran? Nourishing Shoal. Okay. We're going to get hit for 15. They got a bunch of 5-5s. Five Let's fetch up our missing piece power plant and then go to our turn. We need to hit like an Ugin or an O Stone. An O Stone. Yeah, if you do find out what those extensions are, I'm more than happy to get them installed. I 
okay here. So we are gonna run out our Karn. Fetch up an Ulamog. Exile their Blood Crypt. Pass it over to them. Oh, was that enough? Cathartic reunion, okay. Well, we're gonna hit your hand upon it. Karn is a fair and balanced card. He costs seven mana, man. You know? Alright, this is Ulamog. Hits the other two lands. And we're on off the relic. Alright. Let's see if that was enough. There's like a chance we still die because they can like Simeon Spirit Guide, land, and uh, just kill us through that. Looks like this might be enough, though. Breach and Blood Crypt. They wouldn't let us see their whole deck? Or are they going to concede? <laughs> yeah, why do they need lands? We have, we have all the mana in the world. Okay, so I want the Thought Knots. They seem pretty solid. The Collective seems good. Collectives. And the Ravenous again. I feel like I'm in the situation again where I just want to bring in all this. Uh, but this time, I don't mind cutting the Ballista. The Ugans. The Karns. Um, fatal pushes are not relevant. We do want some threats, obviously. Social safety net planeswalker. If your opponent has three more mana than you, then have add, then add three mana the cost of playing them. <laughs> what? I want to bring all of those in, and then I think I'm okay with cutting a worm coil. Um, actually, let's cut an ulamog. Keeping them from winning is fine, because then we can just beat them through our normal game plan. So everything we're bringing in is just to stop them from winning. So Okay. Pretty solid. We've got uh, Tron on turn three here, and we can drop a Thought Knot or a Worm Coil. Most likely it'll be the Thought Knot. And as always, I always lead off with the star if there's a chance that it's going to get blown off. And bl blown up, so then I still draw a card. If I run out the sphere, it gets blown up. I don't get anything. Two hours of sleep. That's no good, man. You're like the hardest working person I know, though, Russ. You've got like five jobs. Alright, 
Sylvan's crying. Let's form Tron. Let's pass it back. Don't hit a uh, Gorio's Vengeance. That's a gristle brand. That's a land. Oh, that's a night's whisper. Yes. That's a fair thing to do. All right, so we're gonna run off the thought knot for sure. So let's see what they're playing with. Double Gorios. Okay. Okay. Well, we're going to take one of them. We're going to run out a sphere. And let's see if we're lucky enough to hit a brutality. Nope. Do it again. See if we can hit Thoughtseize. Nope, we got a relic, which is sad. We'll target them and we'll pass it over. And let's see if we're dead. Opponent can draw three times. At the minimum. Oops. Still got a gristle in their hand. And that should be game. Yay! All right, let's run it back. Okay, this hand's not amazing, but it's got a ravenous trap, which I think we'll be able to surprise our opponent with. So we're gonna keep this. And we'll lead off with a star here. Hands like this, the longer I can hold off on the stirrings, the better. So I don't want to like run it out turn one. Like I'd rather do a turn two here. So hmm, a relic, that's sweet. So we're just going to play the forest, play out the relic, and we're just gonna pass it over to them. Them. I'm 
just gonna pass it over here. I don't want to run off the O stone because I want to be able to hold up mana um, in case I want to activate this uh, relic. So. You were up till 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> That's pretty intense, man. Working till 6.30 in the morning. And then you uh, didn't want to take a nap because uh, you just wouldn't be able to sleep tonight if you did that. That's very fair. Like, As much as I love naps, I try not to take naps. Awesome, that's its tower, so we'll target them again. We're gonna stirrings here. Oh, it's another relic, which I don't mind, but I would have liked to form Tron. So run this one out. Target them as well. We possibly should have just set up for the O stone plan because they are uh, they're able to through the breach. Um, but it's okay. Faithless. Gorios. Okay. Run out the O stone. We'll target them twice. Yeah, because if we would have played O stone last turn, we would have been able to uh, activate it this turn if they go for the through the breach plan so misplay I think All right, that's a cathartic that's fine for us Oh, I played Warp World in Standard, man. Don't you worry. I loved Warp World. I wanted to play Warp World in Modern, but it's just not good enough. Okay. We've got two Faithless in the graveyard. I don't even mind popping one Relic right now, getting rid of that value for them. Holding up the other one, drawing an extra card here. And then we have Ravenous Traps, though. And that's pretty awesome. We hit Sylvan's Crying, so I'm going to activate it and let's go get a mine. We'll play that out and we'll just pass it over. Yeah, if you, if you think of Warp World, you have to think of Biddy. Like, he is the Warp World guy. I mean, the, the idea that every EDH deck that he played revolved around Warp World is just nuts. Like, that's all that guy did. That's all he cared about. Okay, we're still not doing much here. I'm gonna Sylvan Scrying so we can actually get a threat. Um, so I'm gonna grab a Factory and we're gonna play out a Factory. And we're just gonna pass it over. This way I can at least start making some 2-2s two and start uh, applying pressure. Okay. A whole lot of life they just gained. Oh, 
They just hard cast a Gristlebrand. That's pretty baller. Are they gonna draw cards? Okay, so I'm gonna hold priority. Activate this. Activate O Stone. Yeah, he definitely was an agent of chaos. That's like, he honestly just wanted to warp world to see what would happen. If he could have had warp world as an EDH general, he would have. So that's gone. He drew a ton of cards. They've got to discard a bunch of cards. This is the cleanup step, so we're not going to be able to Ravenous Trap. Can we? Oh, because it's uh Oh, because the trigger went on the stack. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, well, we're definitely going to hit their graveyard. We've gotten two Gristle Brands, two Borgmos, and then there's two World Spine Worms gone. Why don't we run this out, and then we're going to run out the Worm Coil as well. And we'll still be able to activate O-Stone if necessary. And let's pass it over. stone and the crazy chance that we have to activate two in response to each other. They're gonna throw the breach. It's a world spine worm. Okay, that's fine. We'll have to activate O stone on our turn. Or we just take the hit. I don't mind just taking the hit. 
Take the hit and go down, or we owe stone. Okay. Well, we can O stone, put a counter on our worm coil, activate O stone, wipe the board. Then he gets a bunch of 15 15s. Or we put a counter on O stone itself and then activate O stone, wipe the board, and then we're able to uh, do it again. Yeah, I think I like that. Just We're just going to put a counter on itself. That way it's not going to blow up, and then we'll activate this O-Stone. They're going to get a bunch of 5-5s. Five we're going to get a bunch of 3-3s. Three three Eating up their tokens. They got a breach again. Oh my gosh, opponent. They're out of control. Okay, they got 30 power on board. We've got a, the ability to soak up 6 of it and gain two, uh, 3 life. So, if we want to win this game, I think our best bet's actually to block this worm token. Um, we can activate. Just to soak up some more damage. We're going to block here block here and block there it doesn't really matter what we're blocking here we're just soaking up damage gaining life so we don't die they get a bunch of fit a uh, bunch more tokens the board here thought not them I swear if they have another one they definitely do <laughs> this is so ridiculous Oh my gosh. And we can't even survive through the swing through. <laughs> oh. Oh man. That's aim. Can block up six of it, take nine, still lose. Ah, oh, that was rough. That was rough. I thought we I thought we were gonna get there in the end. After hitting their entire graveyard like that and Man oh man.
definitely take the play first. This hand does nothing, so we're gonna ship that. This hand can get there as long as we draw a ability to generate green, so or just naturally draw it. Nothing, so we're just going to pass it back. Still nothing, so we're going to pass it over. to hit it like this turn. to bring in the claims Reese did not think the brutalities are worth it blanking on all the cards we cut all of a sudden. I should go back and watch my own stream. Um, wanted to keep the relics. Old stones are good. Warm coils are good. Carns are fine. Did we cut the other two carns though? Do you guys remember? Because I am completely blanking on it right now. Was it the thought knots we kept in to cut the carns? Was that it? Hmm. I think this is pretty close. We'll find out. <laughs> so I did find the extension. Um, all right, so this is a very graveyard based hand. Oh, doesn't do anything though, doesn't form Tron. Ugh. Yeah, I don't think we can keep this. We may be keeping them off their game plan partially, but we're not doing anything, and that's just not where we want to be. This hand's also pretty rough to keep, so we have to ship that. This hand has no lands. And we'll keep this one. Who needs seven cards? It's overrated. Okay? It's overrated, folks. the crazy hand yes 
Faithless into Arc Lights. Alright, well, next turn we're gonna form Tron. Tron. If we're just that cool. Two arc lights in the graveyard. A crackling drake in hand. We're going to take the drake. We're going to exile their graveyard because it's free for us right now. And we're going to pass it over. the factory in case they're on the plan where they're just going to be blowing up uh, flipping that thing in the ice obviously and then get our threats out we'll be able to hold up a, um, a token every turn that we can block with so and if they don't want us to be able to recast that thought not that's fine too because they'll burn both bolts on it I don't think that's the way they're gonna go though Definitely think they're going, I mean, they have to now. Okay. Bolt us, bolt us. They're gonna draw a card. Beat us for seven. I'm actually gonna pop the relic right now because if I get another land, we're gonna be able to O stone, wipe the board, and drop our uh, thought knot, which seems pretty good. Or a new again. Also good. Spell pierce. Okay, we're dead. Oh. Oh, no, ceremonious. That was unfortunate. I could have just gone for the O-Stone there um, instead, but... Nah, that's a bummer. Okay, this hand's solid. We're going to keep this. I don't know. It was it, it. It was definitely the correct call just to crack the stone. It's um, that was just happy that I got a threat like that. Uh, that I just cast it. So it was definitely the incorrect call. Looks as though we're going to get a mono red hollow one possibly here. So I'm gonna go for farming Tron, and then see if we can just drop this O stone in this Karn. Yeah, as soon as I did, I knew the mistake. I don't, I don't know. It was just a bad play. Because um, the O-Stone is just the safer play, and it, I could have just held it up, pass it back to them, and then if they activate, like, a uh, cast, like, another creature or anything like that, we can get rid of it as well. Um, so it was just a bad play. We did get to keep our mine, which is really sweet. And then we're going to be able to car in here. Let's have another burning inquiry. Hey Matt, thanks for joining, man. 
Okay, there. Karn's gone, but we did draw an Ulamog. And thanks for joining, man. Well, this is going to be a painful turn. A little bit better now, we have a worm coil. See what they want to do here. They could swing with. I think they just swing with the adapt because if they swing with the hollow ones, they're just gonna block one of them, and they don't get any extra damage there in the, in the game as life. So I'm pretty sure we're just gonna go to eleven. Take the four. And I think we just want to Lumog. We're gonna take out their Battle Marvel and their Adept. I don't think we're gonna swing here. They're gonna have a real hard time beating us. They've got two arc lights in the graveyard, but that's only six damage. If they manage to get those back. They triple bolt us. They can bolt us again. And then bring back the arc light. Swift smash for six. We'll be down to three. Okay. So I want the Thrag Tusk here. And then. Beyond that, the Revenants aren't bad either. I always feel weird about Nature's Claim in this matchup because I want it because of the Hollow Ones, but I don't want it because it misses everything else. So that's always been like a bummer of why I've never wanted to play it. Um, Ballista is not amazing here. And then I'm not particularly excited about Karn. Uh, we could bring in the Brutalities to kill their 1-2 um, their and rip cards out of their hand. Um, so I don't mind bringing in one of and cutting the other Karn. Um, normally I may consider cutting the Ugins because they don't hit the... They don't hit the Hollow Ones, but they hit everything else. But I think we'll leave them in and try them out. Okay, pretty good. I think we'll keep this. All right, so we can either lead off um, with the Blooming Marsh and we can go Relic. Um, I actually think I'm the biggest fan of starting off with the Tower just in case they do have the uh, Burning Inquiry on their turn. And then that way there's a strong chance we'll be able to keep one of the Power Plants. Um, and we'll run off the Relic here.
fiery temper. Okay, guess we're taking three damage. So we have the option of either ancient stirrings, power plants, um, and passing, or brutality. I'm not. I think our best play is actually just playing power plant and passing it. Because if we draw the mine here, we'll be able to drop worm coil, and that's going to be our best bet. And if not, we're going to go blue. Next turn, we can go blooming marsh, go ancient stirrings, and try to see if we can find it. Phoenix, one Phoenix, and two Blood Moons in the grave. Take some damage. Another hollow one. I actually think right now is a fine time to pop relic because we want to just get closer as possible to getting that mine. Okay. So they can crack at us for eight this turn, but we can just go Blooming Marsh, Sylvan Scrying, Formtron, and hope that that is good enough. Pass it over. Burning Inquiry. They hit an engine, but we got another engine. Let's take three damage. <laughs> Rough life for us. Okay, we still have our mine. But they've got an arc light coming back. Oh boy. Okay, so. We can do the full spread with collective brutality see if they have anything left. And we 
we can discard the sphere and the force. They don't have anything in hand. And then we'll drop the worm coil. Okay. Let's see where we're at. We can O stone, hold up O stone, and swing. We can ancient stirrings, and we should hit a land and do it. It's a little bit more of a gamble, but. Yeah, that could have happened. Green. Land. I'm gonna go stirrings. Play that out, play out the O stone, and we'll pass it over. Let's see, are they gonna swing yet? Nope. Put a fake counter on our Wormy. And let's swing with them. I don't mind if they block, because we're just gonna exile their lands, so. Yep, that's fine. We'll gain the life. Have our tokens. And then we're just gonna drop another, if we drop another worm, we can still activate our worm coil or we can play out the Ulamog. Um, I think the worm is just fine here. And this should be game for our opponent. And that's the match. All right, so definitely not where we should have been with this deck. It didn't perform as well as we wanted, and I made definitely made that misplay earlier. A um, little bit greed. Um, so yeah, but that's going to be it for tonight. Ran our leagues. Um, I definitely had a blast running that Breach Titan deck, so if you guys uh, want to check out the video for that, if you didn't miss it, I'll be uploading that later tonight. Uh, I'll be streaming again on Wednesday at 6 o'clock, so thanks so much for everybody for joining, and uh, have a great night.